This is day 107, 1 Samuel 25 through 27. This is just the word where we're reading chronologically through the Bible in a year. Day 107, 1 Samuel 25 through 27, New King James Version. This is right after David had the opportunity to kill Saul. And Saul acknowledged that David would likely be king and asked that he would spare him later on. 1 Samuel 25. Then Samuel died. And the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Maon whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife wife was Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance, but the man was harsh and evil in his doing. He was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, David sent 10 young men, and David said to the young men, go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, Nabal and greet him in my name and thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity peace be to you peace to your house and peace to all that you have now I have heard that you have shears your shepherds were with us and we did not hurt them nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Carmel ask your young men and they will tell you therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes for we come on a feast day Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servant and to your son, David. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. Then Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one for his, from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shares and give it to men who I do not know where they are from? So David's young men turned on their heels and went back, and they came and told all his, told him all these words. Then David said to his men, Every man gird on his sword. So every man girded on his sword, and David also girded on his sword, and about 400 men went with David and 200 stayed with the supplies. Now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet your master and he reviled them. But the men were very good to us and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them when we were in the fields. They were a wall to us both by night and day, all the time we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what you would do, for harm is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a scoundrel that no one can, no one, such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep, already dressed five shields of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, go on before me. See, I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. So it was as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill and there were David and his men coming down toward her and she met them. Now David had said, surely in vain I have protected all that his fellow, that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid evil for good. May God do so and also more to the enemies of David, if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. Now when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, on me, my Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. And please let your maidservant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let not my Lord regard this scoundrel Nabal, for his name is, so is he. For as his name is, so is he, Nabal. 
in his name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your souls live, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed, from avenging yourself and with your own hand, now then let your enemies and those who seek harm of my Lord be as Nabal. And now this present which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God and the lies of your enemies he shall sling out and from the pocket of a sling as from the pocket of a sling and it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you rule over Israel that this will be no grief to you nor offense of heart to my Lord neither that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself but when the Lord has dwelt well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant. Then David said to Abigail, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advice, and blessed are you, because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has kept me back from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me. Surely by morning light no males would have been left to Nabal. So David received from her hand what she had brought him and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. Now Abigail went to Nabal, and there he was, holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. Therefore she told him nothing, little or much, until morning light. So it was in the morning, when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became like a stone. Then it happened, after about ten days, that the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. So when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept his servant from evil. For the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. And David sent and proposed to Abigail to take her as his wife. Then the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel. They spoke to her, saying, David sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. So she arose, bowed her face to the earth and said, Here is your maidservant, a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So Abigail arose in haste and rode on a donkey, attended by five of her maidens, and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took a high noam of Jezreel, and so both of them were his wives. But Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Palti, the son of Laish, who was from Galim. Chapter 26. Now the Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is David not hiding in the hill of Hachilah, opposite of Gashimon? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul encamped in the hill of Hachilah, which is opposite Geshemon, by the road. But David stayed in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him in the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul had indeed come. So David arose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. And David saw the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the commander of his army. Now Saul lay within the camp with the people encamped all around him. And David answered and said to Ahimelech the Hittite and to Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? 
And uh, Bishaya said, I will go down with you. So David and uh, Bishai came to the people by night, and there Saul lay sleeping within the camp with his spear stuck in the ground by his head, and Abner and the people lay all around him. Then uh, Bishai Shia, said to David, God has delivered your enemy into your hand this day. Now, therefore, please let me strike him at once with the spear right to the earth. And I will not have to strike him a second time. But David said to Abishai, Abishai, do not destroy him. For who can stretch out his hand against the Lord, Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall strike him or his day shall come to die or he shall go out to battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. But please. Take now the spear and the jug of water that are by his head and let us go. So David took the spear and the jug of water by Saul's head and they got away. And no man saw or knew it or awoke, for they were all asleep because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen on them. Now David went out over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great distance be being between them. And David called out to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, do you not answer, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who are you calling out to the king? So David said to Abner, Are you not a man? And who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not guarded your lord, the king? For one of the people came in to destroy your lord, the king. This thing that you have done is not good. As the Lord lives, you desire to die because you have not guarded your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is and the jug of water that was by his head. Then Saul knew David's voice and said, is that your voice, my son, David? David said, it is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, why does my lord thus pursue his servant? For what have I done or what evil is in my hand? Now, therefore, please let my lord, the king, hear the words of his servant. If the Lord has stirred up stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is the children of men, may they be cursed before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day from sharing in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go, serve other gods. So now do not let my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea, as when one hunts a patridge, partridge in the mountains." Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will harm you no more, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Indeed, I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Here is the king's spear. Let one of the young men come over and get it. May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness, for the Lord delivered you into my hand today. But I would not stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. And indeed, as your life was valued much this day in my eyes, so let my life be valued much in the eyes of the Lord and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, may you, baby, may you be blessed, my son, David. You shall both do great things and also still prevail. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. Chapter 27. And David said in his heart, now I shall perish some day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape to the land of the Philistines. And Saul will despair of me to seek me any more in any part of Israel. So I shall escape out of his hand. Then David arose and went over with the 600 men who were with him to Kish, the son of Maach, the king of Gath. So David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, each man with his household, and David with his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the Carmelitess, Nabal's widow. And it was told Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he sought him no more. Then David said to Achish, if I have now found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in some town in your country that I may dwell there. 
for why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? So Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Therefore, Ziklag has belonged to the kings of Judah to this day. Now the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was one full year and four months. And David and his men went up and raided the Gershurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites. For those nations were the inhabitants of the land from of old. As you go to Shur, even as far as the land of Egypt, whenever David attacked the land, he left neither man nor woman alive, but took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, the camels, and the apparel, and returned to the and came to Achish. Then Achish would say, "Where have you made a raid today?" And David would say, "Against the southern area of Judah, or against the southern area of the." Jeramalites, or against the southern area of the Kenites, David would save neither man nor woman alive to bring news to Gath, saying, lest they should inform on us, saying, thus David did, and thus was his behavior all the time he dwelt in the country of the Philistines. So Achish delivered David, so Achish believed David, saying, he has made his people Israel utterly abhor him. Therefore, he will be my servant forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. That was day 107, 1 Samuel 20, 25 through 27, New King James Version.